I'm Professor Puffin, and today we're going to draw a puffin like me. Are you guys ready? Okay. So, the first part we're going to draw like we do every time is the body, okay? So let's start with that. The puffin's body isn't round like you think all the other birds are. The puffin's body kind of looks like a bean. So I'm going to show you how to draw that right now. You start up here by his head and see how the back is kind of straight and then it comes down like this. That's part one. The other part is the chest. So they come out and just like that. See? So it's kind of like a raindrop upside down almost. Okay, the next part. The puppet's head. That's right. Let's draw his head. It sits on the back of the neck like that. And while we're here, let's go ahead and add the neck too, right? The neck on the back comes straight down like that. And then the neck in the front kind of curves in like that. Okay. Looking pretty good. He looks like a puppet. Looks like somebody I know. Okay, the next step is the beak. Look how big this beak is that I have. And puffin beaks are really big because they need to carry lots of food. So what we're going to do is draw the beak. It kind of looks like a heart without the little dip in the middle. So let me show you what I mean. See that? Just like that. That's a puffin bee. Now, this puffin, he's got a good attitude. He's happy today. So we're gonna have this puffin smile, and that's gonna help create the line that divides the top and the bottom part of the beak. I'll show you what I mean. See? He's smiling. All right. Now, before we're done with the beak, there's a couple little details that we've gotta show. See this part here, the gray part? Well, we're gonna put that in. It's kind of like a triangle. And it goes from the head across the beak like that. Later on, you can fill that in with your own color. But today, we're just gonna draw the lines of the bird. And then you can fill them in with color later. The other parts of the beak, he has three other lines like this that go through. Okay. It's already looking like a puffin. But he has one thing that we really want to show you. It's a little different than all the other birds you'll ever see. And it's the puffin's eye. Look how my eye is shaped. And look at the design that goes around the back. It's really unique, huh? So how are we going to draw that? Well, first, if you start all the way back here and come up right before where he was smiling, that's part one. Pretty cool. Now, the other part, before we draw all the little bits, let's draw the rest of this eye in there. All right, and let's give him a pupil. Boop, like that. All right, now, we're not done yet. You'll notice that this shape is pretty dark and looks like a triangle almost, so we want to do that. Okay, that's pretty good. Yours is probably going to look better than Professor Puffin's. Professor Puffin is drawing with a really big pencil of it. So, what's the next part? Well, after you do the eye, what's the other thing? Remember last drawing lesson we had where we talked about how birds fly? They have wings, right? And when Miss Puffin came flying in, her wings were kind of short because puffins don't just fly. They swim. That's right. They spend just as much time almost flying through the air as they do swimming in the water, looking for things to eat. It's pretty cool that we can do both. But what that means is that our wings are a little short and they're really, really tightly grouped feathers. So let's go ahead and draw that. It's almost the shape of the body again, but smaller. So, starts here. And look at that. Just like that. Okay, and remember the wings, how they have all kinds of feathers that make up the wing, so it's all strong and you can fly and swim? Well, we still have those here too, so we're gonna put those lines in for now. And we'll come back and add all the feathers in a little bit. Now, the next part is the feet. Puffin have very short feet and legs because 
they don't really use them very much. They kind of use them to take off in the water. They run on the water to get going and even get up off the water. So they're really strong and short and stout. So let's put the back or the first foot in that we'll see right here in the front like this. And then we're gonna put a little line right here like that. So those are the legs. Now let's draw what the feet are. A puffin's feet are webbed. That's right. So in between the three toes of the puffin, there's like a web, kind of like a frog. And it helps the puffin swim in the water. Like fins, like, like, like flippers, like you would use at the pool or like you would go diving. So let's do that. Put a little bit of an ankle back here or a little bit of a heel. And fuck, there's the lower part of the foot. Next. Just like that. Okay, wait a minute. Didn't you tell us that there were three toes, Professor Puffin? That's true, I did. Let's go ahead and draw that next toe, but don't draw it right in the middle. As you're looking, the toe is gonna come, the third toe, or middle toe is gonna come right off of the ankle, and it's gonna come out here like that. All right, now, just a couple little lines that are curved, like that, and there's the Puffin's foot. Cool, all right. And also, the puffin has some scales and things that make up his ankle, so we're going to put those like that. It's a puffin foot! It looks better than my foot, almost. Now, let's look at the other foot. Now, everything is a little smaller in the back, right? And I'm going to cheat and draw a little ahead of time, like that. Okay, and add the little scale lines. And there you have it. You know what, before we get going too far, this puffin looks like he's floating in the air, right? But did you know that mostly puffins live and hang out on the rocks along the ocean side and along the beaches? And so it's really rugged where they live and not very many people are there. So it's lots and lots of rocks and places to hide and build nests. So in this case, this puffin's gonna be sitting on a rock. Okay, all right, he's looking pretty good. We just have a couple more things to add and then we're gonna go and do some detail. So, puffins have very, 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 very short tails. They don't use them like most flying birds do, but they do use them when they're swimming to help them swim underwater and steer. So, they're just a real strong couple of little feathers that come out like this and they go up underneath the flight feathers. So, we can go ahead and color that in because they're dark. You don't really see them. Okay, now, now that we've got all of the basics of the puffin, let's have some fun and do all the details. Remember, I have a hairdo and most birds do. All their feathers make it look like they have a hairdo. So let's give this puffin's friend here a hairdo. Connecting from the beak, if you go here, give him a couple little tufts of hair back there, a couple feathers. And there you are. That's part one. Now, the neck is dark, so we're going to fill the neck in. Just like that. Okay, and then the next part is let's go ahead and draw those feather lines in. Remember the feathers from before? That's right. Now at home, later on, when you're done with this drawing, you can go in and fill these in with almost solid black color. Because they still have the feathers, but because they're all dark, you don't see them as the same as you see other birds' feathers. And that's okay. They still have them, and they can still fly and swim with them. Next, let's add the lower feathers. These are the ones that really help them catch air and catch water. All right. What else do we have? Let's see. He needs a little bit of connection here too. So his neck's a little bit fine. He's got such a big beak, he's gonna need a little bit stronger neck to pick that beak up and move around. And when you're at home, you can fill this in with either gray or black here too. That little triangle we did on the beak, that's that. Okay, we're pretty much done now. We just wanna do a couple little things to make it look a little cool. This doesn't really, the, the black also does this here. So see? So now it connects and it's all fluffy. All right. 
And one more little spot up here underneath. Like that. This all gets filled in too. Now at home, if you notice, I have orange and I have kind of a blue-gray. So you can go ahead and fill those colors in there if you'd like to. But for now, you've learned how to draw a puffin. This is an Atlantic puffin. Did you know that there are three types of puffin? Like I told you before, I come from the East Coast. So I'm from the Atlantic Ocean. But out here in Washington State, where I live now, there are two types of puffin that live out on the coast. They're the horned puffin and the tufted puffin. The tufted puffin almost looks like he's got a hairdo, like, like a couple big long eyebrows. So when you have some time, go look up puffins on the internet and you'll see that there's different types of puffins. So for now, that's it. You learn how to draw a puffin. And I'm Professor Puffin. And that's the end of the day. So stay tuned for our next lesson. And until then, 